Live from downtown Bakersfield, 23 ABC News Midday starts now. And good morning. Thanks for tuning in to 23 ABC News at 11 a.m. I'm Mike Hart. And I'm Danielle Kernkamp. Our top story, more fallout today from the U.S. drone attack that killed Iran's top military leader. Iranian state TV is reporting this morning that Iran will no longer abide by any limits of the 2015 nuclear deal. This as the Iraqi parliament meets and calls for the expulsion of U.S. troops from that country. ABC's Julia McFarlane has the latest from Washington. President Trump landing back in Washington last night and facing a storm. The attack on Iran's top general, head of the Quds Force, listed as a terror organization, sparking fears about the possible consequences. Democrats also upset at what they say is a lack of transparency surrounding the move. All this as the regime announced it is scrapping all outstanding restrictions from the nuclear deal. Speaker Nancy Pelosi announcing a war powers resolution seeking to limit military action taken by the Trump administration. Elizabeth Warren raising questions over the timing of the strike. Why now? I think people are starting to ask why now did he do this? Why not delay? Trump's original claim that Soleimani's killing prevented an attack challenged on the Sunday shows. When you say the attacks were imminent, how imminent were they? If you're an American in the region, days and weeks, this is not something that's relevant. Over the weekend, President Trump doubling down on his plan to attack Iranian cultural sites should Iran attack any Americans or U.S. interests. Iran home to ruins and antiquities dating back millennia. Boris Johnson's official spokesman saying their destruction is prohibited under treaties and conventions, of which the U.S. is a signatory. Shabinet Meanwhile, Shabinet. a non-binding vote in the Iraqi Shabinet. parliament to expel foreign troops Shabinet. has been Shabinet. another destabilizing outcome. Shabinet. European allies in Iraq calling for de-escalation. Germany saying they will respect any decision of the Iraqi government. The Brits underlying the importance of the ongoing fight against ISIS. Meanwhile, in Iran, hundreds of thousands have been mourning and marching in the streets for three days. Cities like Avaz and Mashhad were the scene of anti-government protests since 2017. Now the Iranian leadership touting these crowds as the U.S. attack seems to have people rallying behind the regime. And there were similarly huge crowds in Iraq, thousands of people turning out to pay their respects to General Qasem Soleimani and an Iraqi militia leader, both killed on Iraqi soil in that drone strike that has lit up tensions in the region once more. Julia McFarlane, ABC News, London. Back here at home, you're invited to take part in a black tie gala to start the new year, maybe even dance with the mayor, all to help local folks in need. The inaugural Mayor's Ball will take place February 8th at CityServe on F Street. If you didn't know, CityServe connects families in crisis with more than 80 local churches of all denominations, helping families get back on their feet. Last year alone, they distributed $10 million in products to local families. They came knocking on my door when I didn't have anything. Um, my husband left me and I didn't know what to do and they came and they brought diapers, wipes, formula for my children. And yes, we are told Mayor Go and several of her organizers for this event all said you might even get a chance to dance with the mayor at this event. Oh. Now, tickets are on sale for $100 each to attend the Black Tie Gala on February 8th. For more information, you can give them a call at 371-2650 or go to our website, turn to 23com Let's bring in Elena Rusk, get a quick check of this 11 o'clock forecast because it was still pretty chilly this morning, even around well, 8 o'clock. chilly enough to still have snow up at Alta Sierra. That's right? true. <laughs> yeah. They were able to stay open for the the holidays. They are now closed for this week, but they're excited because we have a chance of snow coming their way Thursday and possibly again on Sunday. Many other mountain communities are looking forward to that snow. Obviously for Alta Sierra, it's for recreation, but for Pine Mountain Club, many people have cabins up there. They want that winter experience and it feels like that. I know for a lot of local residents, though, they're a little over the icy roads. You are going to have some calm, quiet days with continued snow melt for the first half of the week. And then again, snow chances coming Thursday. So before we talk about that, it's a dry weather pattern for today as that high pressure continues to move on shore through tomorrow. So it was cold. We've been in the 40s all morning. Now we're getting to 51 here in Bakersfield, 52 in Tatchby after they were in the 20s this morning. As we climb here in Bakersfield, there's that 58 moderate air quality. More on that approaching storm for midweek coming up. We now know the identity of the person whose body was found in a canal off South H Street Friday. Bakersfield police are saying 31 year old Armando Montoya Jr. was found in the canal about 2 p.m. Friday afternoon. The coroner's office is working to determine the cause and manner of death. We'll continue to bring you updates as they come into our newsroom.
The Bakersfield Police Department is working to put the brakes on local street racing. The department held multiple operations across Bakersfield during the overnight hours of this past weekend. Officials made 24 stops during these operations, resulting in 18 citations and the impounding of three vehicles. The department will be conducting similar street racing operations over the next several weeks. According to BPD, there were over 55 reckless driving arrests made in 2019. In December, the Bakersfield City Council directed BPD to hold a forum to discuss potential solutions to combat street racing. A date for that meeting has not yet been set. Tomorrow you have the chance to share your thoughts on the homeless crisis at another outreach meeting right here in Bakersfield. The city will be hosting the third meeting to talk about homelessness at Mechanics Bank Convention Center and Theater tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. You're invited to come out and give your input. Two previous meetings to discuss homelessness were held last month. Meantime, the county gearing up for its annual homeless population census, known as the Point in Time Count, set for January 24th from 3.30 to 10.30 in the morning. The goal is to find trends within the homeless population in hopes of reducing the number of people who live on the streets, in cars, under bridges, or anywhere else unsheltered. If you'd like to get involved, you can volunteer through the Homeless Collaborative. You must be at least 18, and you can register online at endkernhomeless.com. Homeless.org. Water polo could soon be one step closer to becoming a reality in the Kern High School District after tonight's Board of Trustees meeting. Tonight, the board's expected to vote on whether to include water polo as a CIF sport amongst local high schools. With a new aquatics complex set to be open, a spokesperson said as many as 10 high schools said they'd be open to participating in water polo as soon as the fall of this year. Currently, Garces and Bakersfield Christian have water polo programs. The program, the board meeting is scheduled to begin at seven. Starting this week, the City Animal Control Unit will be offering low-cost vaccine clinics at local parks right here in town. They're held the second Saturday of each month from 9 to noon. This one will be Saturday at the park at Riverwalk. Pet owners will also be able to get their pets licensed yes, and <laughs> microchipped. Starting February 1st, though, vaccine clinics will no longer be offered at the Animal Care Center. The 2020 schedule is on the City Animal Care Center's website as well as the BPD's Animal Control page. The American Red Cross is giving local parents the opportunity to get CPR certified for free. The nonprofit's funding free pediatric CPR AED courses to parents, expecting parents, grandparents, and child care providers of kids under 18. The sessions are January 11th, February 8th, and March 21st from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the McMurtry Aquatic Center. Pre-registration is required. You can sign up in person at the center located at 1325 Q Street. All right, let's get back to business, shall we? Lassen's food and vitamin store is looking to fill cash register positions year round. 23 ABC's Daniela Garrido has more on what the company's looking for in their candidates. Do they care? Care about themselves? Do they care about the work that their name is going to be attached to? Do they care about their fellow team members? The only Lassen store in Bakersfield has been open for 17 years, growing their staff as time has gone by. In caring, respect, and bettering our, our community by what we offer. That's our mission. Um, the products that are in our store, we have them here because we believe that they're going to better not just our environment, not just in, uh, better our community, but better each other's health by what we consume, by what we purchase. The company says they're always accepting applicants for candidates to fill their full-time and part-time cash register positions. The main thing that we look for is someone that can be charismatic, um, someone that is going to leave a good impression because you could have a great experience in the store but have a terrible experience in the register and at least it's the last impression you're going to have with us. Working at the store is more than just a job. It's a commitment to the customers looking for a healthy lifestyle. Passion and interest in the wellness industry was definitely huge, um, as well as just, you know, a sense of urgency um, and connecting with customers, giving back to the community. Natalie has been a nutrition clerk and cashier at Lassen's for 10 months now, and she says her background as a nutrition student has helped. Um, a lot of cross training throughout different departments. Uh, my main department was the vitamin department, so it was nice to, you know, go back and forth between cashiering and really educate the customers about specific uh, supplements uh, based on their individual needs and really tailor it. Although a wellness background isn't necessary, the company says they train all their employees not only on their job duties, but on education behind a wellness lifestyle. 